What's going on guys? Hope you guys are doing well today. Appreciate you guys checking back in on the channel. Today I wanted to do something a little bit different and that is talk about trail cameras and this buck right here that I harvested back in 2016. The reason why I decided to talk about this topic today is one, I'm a huge believer and a big fan of running trail cameras. I do run several trail cameras pretty much year round on various properties that I hunt. And two, are the ones that kind of put all their eggs into that basket of running trail cameras, just kind of solely hunting just on trail cameras alone. I know the stuff that you see on TV and all that stuff, you know, they're always showing trail cam pictures and I'm gonna go out tonight conditions are perfect and I'm gonna kill that buck. I don't know what it's like for you guys and where you hunt at and if it is that case where you're at then that's perfectly fine and more power to you but that's not the way it works around here for me. And like I mentioned I killed this buck in 2016. I took my bow with me just because I'd much rather prefer to get a shot with my bow but I took my rifle as well because it was opening day of firearm season. I'm gonna back up to 2015 uh, the week of pretty much November kind of 14th, 15th through that following week of I'd say somewhere around the November 23rd or 24th, somewhere in that time frame, kind of like a 7 to 10 day window are the only pictures and video that I had of this buck the year prior before I shot him. You know, running trail cameras pretty much year round, he just flat out did not live on the property where I run my trail cameras and where I'm able to hunt. So I ran trail cameras all through the summer, fall, and hunting season of 2015 and ended up harvesting an eight point, luckily with a bow, on November 11th. So I continued to run trail cameras in 2015. My dad kind of hunts the same properties that I do. Got to give all my credit to my dad. He's the one that got me into hunting. He's the one that keeps me going forward in hunting. I kind of run all the trail cameras now and but we both still maintain the properties and we both still like to get out and have fun together. So I continued to run trail cameras in 2015 after I shot my eight point with my bow. And through the week of probably November 15th through the 23rd, somewhere in that time frame, give or take a few days, I did get three or four different pictures of this buck and a couple different videos. And that was it. No other pictures in the summer, no pictures in the fall. Just had a kind of like a week long stretch, maybe 10 day stretch of pictures and videos of him on the property that I hunt in November of 2015. So I had these pictures of him in 2015. Nobody saw him from the tree stand. No neighbors or anybody killed him that I knew of. We got a lot of hunting pressure around us, so that's kind of concerning and always on the back of our mind. And I'm sure a lot of people are faced with the same conditions we are. But it's just part of it. it. It's hunting. We only hunt on this particular property where I killed him, kind of a 40 acre timber block where we've took some time and put in a food plot. But other than that, it's pretty heavily timbered and then quite a bit of pressure from the neighboring property owners. So 2015 goes by. I don't hear any updates on anybody killing him. Nobody else saw him from the tree stand, anything like that. Continue to run trail cameras the following year, all through the summer, leading into the fall, no sign of him whatsoever. Never was spotted from the road, you know, while out scouting and just didn't walk in front of any of my trail cameras. So this kind of leads back into one, you don't know if he survived the gun season or not of 2015 because he does not live on the property where I'm hunting. And two, there's a lot of people out there that do run trail cameras, but they kind of put what I would say all their eggs into that basket. You know, oh, I'm not seeing any bucks on my trail camera. And nothing that gets me excited, nothing that makes me want to hunt that stand. Well, it's good to have inventory of what you have on the farm. For me personally, in my years of hunting and what I've learned, I kind of just throw trail cameras out the window in November. That's not to say that I take them down. That's definitely when I want to keep them up and see what other bucks kind of sneak onto the property. I just want to be in the stand as much as possible, try to do as many all day sets as I can, and then you just sit and wait and hope for the best. Fast forwarding to 2016, trail cameras were ran all summer long, all fall. No videos, no pictures of this buck whatsoever. Bow season goes by. Uh, had some nice encounters with bucks, but nothing that I wanted to shoot. 
So it's the second day of firearm season of 2016. I believe that was November 13th, give or take a few days, but right around there. I'm in the tree stand, took my bow with me and my shotgun because I would much rather get it done with my bow, just a lot more adrenaline, a lot more fun, a lot more challenging type of a hunt. But I hear a lot of commotion out in the woods and can just kind of tell that something's probably pushing a doe around, you know, pretty heavy footsteps, a lot of commotion, a lot of banging around, then it kind of gets closer and closer and I can hear kind of what I think some tines maybe hitting off of some trees occasionally. And then you start hearing this guy just give some heavy, deep, long grunts. So, you know, heartbeat starts going, start getting all ramped up. At that point, still pretty far away, pretty distant. So I reach for my 450 Bushmaster and all of a sudden a doe, very tired doe, comes running out of the woods into an opening. And seemed like 20 minutes passed by, but it was probably a minute. And this guy pops out behind her, stands on the wood line, makes a real nice, heavy, hard scrape, and just kind of checks her out as she's out there with some other does. And eventually he walks out to, it was right at 165 yards, and I was fortunate to make a good clean kill shot on this buck right here. I had never seen him from the tree stand. I had uh, maybe a week stretch in 2015 of getting pictures of him. At the time, I just thought it was some random buck that showed back up on the property. I knew he was mature, very heavy bodied buck. Uh, this thing ended up live weight uh, before we field dressed him, ended up weighing right at 275 pounds. You can see here by the picture of him hanging off the bucket of the tractor. Just a fully mature, awesome Indiana whitetail. But the point is, I didn't give up on what I knew and what I thought were my best tree stands during the rut. But after I got home and started kind of looking him over, I just got to thinking, you know, with these front claws and then kind of how the, uh, they're not really kickers, but they're a little bit shorter g2s that go off of the back before the actual g2s get started started thinking it looked pretty familiar so i flipped back through to 2015 pictures of that other buck and behold it it was the same buck so this guy never lived on the farm so in 2015 he wandered onto the property where i hunt at on like november 15th 16th somewhere in that range give or take a few days and then the following year, 2016, when I killed him on November 13th, you can see there, he's just smart enough to know where the does are during the rut. And he showed up uh, three days sooner than he did the year, year prior to check out and see if those does were still hanging out in that same area the year before. Just a few takeaways from this video. I would say be a believer in trail cameras. Use them to your benefit, but don't put all your eggs into one basket with trail cameras. Maybe take a look back at a year or two prior and see what kind of showed up out of nowhere and then hunt those same locations the following year right around those same dates. Because a big mature buck, he's going to know where to go hang out with the ladies at. So he'll remember, he'll come back to the same spot if he had a good time the year before and just continue to hunt those spots that you think are good, the ones you think are solid. Be smart with the wind. Always be safe on your entry and exit routes. You know, mature bucks like this, if you spook them one or two times, it might be okay. But the more they start seeing you on those same paths, you know, coming into your tree stands or your ground blinds, whatever you're hunting, they're going to catch on pretty quick. Don't get discouraged if you're not seeing things on trail camera that get you excited. You know, just be in the tree stand as much as you can during November. There's nothing like hunting the rut. Just make sure you're out there. Try to get some all day sets in. Just try to be in the stand as much as you can. Uh, if a buck's not locked up with a doe, he's going to be out cruising, searching for the next one. So just try to be in stand as much as possible, and you just never know during the rut what can happen. Stay patient. Anything can happen. Season's going to be here before you know it. Make sure and subscribe because I'm going to have a lot of deer hunting videos coming up. Appreciate you guys watching as always, and happy hunting. Be safe. See you guys.